Spirit Talkers is brought to you by Southwest Trading Company. Southwest Trading Company is located in Tulsa, Oklahoma at 1306 East 11th Street. Southwest Trading Company is an indigenous owned business. They have a lot of items like jewelry, blankets, clothing, art, home decor, collectibles, and so much more. Go follow and like their Facebook page to keep up with all events at the store and where they may be setting up. And once again, that is Southwest Trading Company, located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1306 East 11th Street. Let them know Spirit Talkers sent you. This podcast is brought to you by Native Co. Bead and Supply, a native-owned and operated craft supply store founded to give Native artists a way to craft and sustain their creative minds and helping everyone create indigenously. You can shop online at nativecobeadsupply.com or in store at 520 West 12th Street, Ada, Oklahoma, and let them know Spirit Talkers sent you. Everybody, welcome back to Spirit Talkers. A little different setup here. Yep. Yeah, my tripod broke. Mm. So I got this little one. This one wouldn't reach the top of our. I would have to. I don't know. It's it's a smaller tripod. So and it was uh, too early to go try to buy one. So this seems real cozy though. But yeah, I thought Chris would like. Just sitting on the couch. Now, if I y'all f- catch me like this, I'll be. No. <laughs> you have to forgive me. <laughs> Had a long weekend. <laughs> yeah, we both had very long weekends, but dang, I think our last the last time we did an episode was January twelfth. Mm. But I mean, we recorded that even before that. Yeah. So I don't even remember when. I don't know if it was before New Year's or after New Year's is when we did that recording. So, I don't know. But it's a long time. Yeah. It <laughs> feels good to be back, though. It really does. I mean, it's been a long time since I got to sit and visit with you. And it's always good to come over here and, you know, visit. And, you know, it's been a good day. And like I said, this weekend was a real long weekend for me. Uh, we had a... Uh, an honor dance here in Tulsa, and man, it it went it cut off early. I think we ended like at eight thirty, but we started nine in that McDonald's, and uh, <laughs> we took it on all, all the way to the next day. And I'm still recouping. Hamburglar wasn't quick singing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you had that, and then I went to Indigenous or Indigi Pop X in Oklahoma City. How was that? It was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed seeing everybody. I saw a lot of friends and made some new friends and met some fans of both whatever. Awesome. Okie Podcast, Spirit Talkers, and then even like the video I made for Ava Rose Johnson. I made some people that like that video I made for her. And and uh, uh, some of them were like, how come you guys aren't part of this? <laughs> I was like, I don't know why you ever contacted us. <laughs> nobody, never, no, nobody even ever asked us to do anything. Man. Yeah, just yeah. pitiful. We're that, <laughs> we're just stepchildren of everybody like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Nobody ever contacted us to do a, maybe a panel or anything. That would have been cool to do. Yeah. I would have loved to have done the panel or even a, like have a a show like a live podcast show mm. there and then have people come and. 
I don't know, ask us questions like we do on TikTok, you know? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. I mean, that would have been really cool to do. Just an hour. You don't have to give us like all day. But but everybody hit up and Digipop X and tell them to give us something, a spot. Let uh, Tom Ferris know y'all want us down there at uh, OKC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we'd love to do that. But I mean, but then again, you know, I think. Um, it's only its second year and all joking aside, I think it's because, you know, like we haven't done this podcast in about what, three months, I guess. And so if I release this next week, I, then it would, I think it'd be over three months, but I mean, to address everybody of why we haven't <laughs> done this podcast, I've had messages of like, are you and Chris beefing? <laughs> like, yeah. like, are y'all mad at each other? Are y'all not like? And I'm like, no, you know, I've had to let people know through Messenger about uh, just what has, what has happened. So, you know, like, and then just to address it too, because maybe some people didn't know, you know, but maybe you knew my dad, you know, maybe maybe your folks or your grandparents knew my dad too, you know. I think, but my dad passed away. Uh, his name was mm. Lester Sun Eagle. And he passed away in January, like end of January. Mm. And so it was kind of rushed. And I mean, for Pawnees, we have to bury our loved ones in that four day um, type of way. So, you know, on top of him passing away, um, I had to, you know, do what I could to make sure that happened and then make sure a lot of his arrangements and all of that was handled properly, you know, because, um, he, he's taught, he's talked to me before about him passing away and just him wanting me to handle all that stuff, you know? And I, and it's crazy because I prepared myself. I thought I prepared myself for him passing away, you know, mm -hmm. like going on, but, it still hit me. It was a gut punch. It was a true gut punch. And it was something that like, as an adult, I have not ever felt before. Yeah. And then, you know, trying to grieve and process and wrap my head around what just happened. And then in shock and like traumatized from seeing him in his last days at the hospital, you know, handling, you know, how to bury him, how to dress him, uh, what the viewings are like, the services, and all this stuff just like comes at you, you yeah. know, and I was not prepared for that, even yeah. though he would tell me like, you have to, you have to be prepared for that stuff. Cause you're still going to be grieving and sad, but you still have to make these decisions, you know? And yeah. I don't, and he said like, I don't know if anyone's going to help you. And he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know if you want to ask for help or he said, but it's, He's like, maybe you don't even feel like asking for help because you're just so, you're going to be overwhelmed. And yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't believe him, you know, because I've I've never done, I've never done anything like that before. And it was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do up till now, you know, like in my life of 35 years, like I've never had to do something like that. And it was hard, man. It was like just trying to, just trying to make that make like this last thing. If like, I would say like, this is the last thing I'm going to do for you. You know, I know it is. And I just want it to be right. Like I want everything to go as right as it can go. And, you know, just help me out. Just one last time. If you can, you know, not mm -hmm. this last time, but I know you're going to be there. Help me all the time. But yeah. if there was ever a thing that I really needed your help with, like just to make everything go smooth and all that, just please like, just, help me out you know in this in these days in these four days and it was crazy man like because he passed away on sunday and before i knew it it was like it was already like at his funeral like we were already at his funeral and that was that happened then we buried him and then it was just like it just happened so fast and yeah. and it just like it was just unbelievable like how everything took place happened and then it was done with and then it was just like you know now what you know and then i had to just 
try to m- move forward, I guess. Which yeah. it, which is like it just I don't know. I was telling Chris like it's just you know because Chris would check on me and I had other people check on me, you know, and ask me how I was doing and everything, and it was just like I just don't. I, it, there's days where I just laid in bed mm. and I just I just, I couldn't get up, you know. I couldn't. I, could, I just couldn't do anything. Like I just like I just didn't feel like do like I didn't care about doing anything. And then it just, you know, I was trying to see if I could wake up from this dream, this bad dream that happened. And so that was like, uh, it was just like that. And then still we had to clean this house out and everybody was like, man, that's going to be tough, you know? And, and I was, I really wasn't thinking of how tough that would be. My main concern was like, just what am I going to do with all this stuff? You know, like. You know, luckily, you know, my brother on his side came and my sister came and we had help. And so Charmin was there, too. So we all cleaned out his house and, you know, moved stuff around and got everything out. And when we finished that, though, like that hit me like that was like it it was just like I physically don't have a place here anymore. You know, yeah. like like Pawnee is my home, but I just don't have a physical home anymore mm. is what hit me. And it was like, you know, I'm not going to be able to come here anymore and talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, I'm sorry, but I thought I was prepared for to do all that, but that's all right, nephew. You know, just let it out. You know, it's okay. We're all human. You know, that was your father. You know, and and you know, mourning is is, is tough. You know, especially with natives. You know, we have rituals and all kinds of things. You know, but. To love your folks, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm showing that. You know, uh, if you keep it bald inside, you don't express those things, that's when you have issues, you know, and it's okay. Everybody understands that. You know, everybody understands, you know, the loss of a loved one. And if you haven't, then, then you're truly blessed. Yeah. But someday, we all go through that and again you know i i know uh, your relationship with you and your dad was was tight you know you guys were close and you know uh i know we visited about those kind of things you know and i know you had you know visions and stuff and you know i told you then you know take that time and visit with him yeah you know, creator's blessing you with that that knowledge that you know, that time is coming, that that time is, you know, near and take that time to visit with him. And I know you did. Mm-hmm. I know I, I heard, you know, how you talk, you know, went, went and seen him when he's in the hospital and watch TV with him. Mm-hmm. You know, nephew, I, I want to say this, you know, think of those type of things, you mm-hmm. know, those those good times when you got to share with him, got to visit with him. You know, all those things, get to watch him laugh. You know, you said y'all ate meals together and, you know, watch TV and, you know, all those things. Those are all beautiful things. Those are all good things, you know. And some people don't always get blessed like that to do those things. You know, they're too busy, caught up with their stuff, you know. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, you know, I, I know... uh it's a tough situation, you know, again, you know, you know, my, my history, you know, I, you know, sometimes I get down like that too. We all do. It's all right. It's, it's human. You know, if, if you didn't, then there's something wrong with you, mm-hmm. you know, so don't, don't, don't ever be ashamed of that. You know, if you love your mother and father, go see them, go talk to them, you know, cause someday, someday, you're going to know what that's feeling. And, you know, again, you know, you, you got a chance to visit with him and, 
share a lot with them and you know you're truly blessed and and you know that focus should be on that the the things that you know you were able to accomplish with him Mm -hmm. you know i know he was very proud of you you know there was a couple times i ran into him in the gas station you know Mm -hmm. yeah in between here and red rock you know and I'd see him and, you know, he'd always talk good about you and, you know, and, you know, he'd always tease me and stuff. And, you know, he'd always say, I really appreciate, you know, being there, you know, for him, for you, you know, and, and, you know, he, he always expressed how much he cared, how much he loved you, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes he, you know, he, he, he would say, you know, uh, I'm glad he's got people around him. You know, because someday he knew, you know, things might not go too good. And, you know, again, don't think of death in that negative way. Those old timers used to say death is is not to be to be sad about. You know, death is just part of life. You know, death is to remind you what is important. You know. All those things that you expressed with your dad during those times, you know, remember those things, you know, those are, were meant to be, you know, and, and like I said, death was not to be, you know, a sad thing, but it's also to look at yourself as an individual because we're all going to take that walk one day. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be there. And, you know, your dad had strong faith, you know. Uh, I know they told stories about, you know, his transformation, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, into Christianity, you know, and and again, you know, his strong belief, you know, again, you know, respect that, you mm-hmm. know, respect, you know, even if that's not so, you know, even that uh, ceremonial way, you know, we all believe that we go to that happy hunting ground, Mm -hmm. that better place. And, you know, he's up there. He's with his folks. He's with his people. Yeah. You know, he was, you said he was the last of his, his era, Mm -hmm. you know, his family, you know, and, you know, he's up there with those guys now, probably singing, dancing and joking and, you know, doing all of those things that they used to do when they were youngsters, you mm-hmm. know. So, you know, think of those good things, you know, all the th- stories that he told you, you know, all those things that he shared with you, you know. Now it's your turn, you know, to remember those things and talk about those things, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and, you know, I hope, you know, uh, you understand what what I'm trying to say. You know, I know... Uh, uh, like I was saying, you know, I'm trying to encourage you, you know, to think of the positive things in this. Not that he's gone. Not that, you know, there's going to be times. And I told you that there's going to be times you're going to have good times. Mm-hmm. There's going to be times that, you know, you just can't help but break down and cry because you think of him. Mm-hmm. You know, and and. But Remember. You know, we all will reach that. You know, if there's someone out there that you love or, you know, you're concerned about, take that time and go visit them. Mm -hmm. Go see them. Because now you know, once they take that walk, you can't never get it back, Mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, don't focus on the negative things. Think of the positive things. Times you, you shared that birthday with him, you know. Uh, I remember y'all posting pictures of, you know, his birthday, you know, mm-hmm. and those good times y'all had. And and uh, like I said, you know, those are all good memories, fond memories. That's that's the things that you need to remember, not when his last days, you know, when mm-hmm. he was, you know, uh, not in a good way, you know. Think yeah. about those good things. All the times he, you, you knew he liked to joke. Mm-hmm. He, he had a, a good sense of humor, and uh, mm-hmm. he always liked to laugh. And I always th- thought he was the pawnee pimp because he's always <laughs> had that hat and sunglasses. You yeah. know, and <laughs> he show up and represent, and uh, he was always, uh, you know, good like that. You know, they always have 
good words, you know, good and in, inspiring words, you know, and a lot, everything that, uh, was in him is in you. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember, you know, even at the, at the funeral, you know, everybody, you know, you had cut your hair and, you know, and honor him like that, you know, and everybody, you know, were saying how much you looked like him, mm-hmm. you know, how much you were just a spitting image of him when he was younger. You yeah. Know? And <laughs> so again, you know, he lives on, mm-hmm. you don't think he's gone, you know, uh, um, as long as you keep him in your heart, and you tell those stories, you know, that knowledge that he gives you, you know, that you share that, you know, he's going to live on. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Indian folks were bad about closing those stuff up and not sharing that with anybody. And then it, it's all gone. Mm-hmm. And you're rich with that inspiration and with that, all those stories that he gave you, you know, the times that, you know, he... Ran, ran here and ran there and his basketball years and, you know, stuff like that, you know. I remember him telling me all those kind of stories, too. And, you know, I sat there and thought, well, that's pretty cool, all the things he got to do, you know, playing mm-hmm. basketball or he went and seen some famous people in Indian country and he said he dunked on them. I said, God! <laughs> so, <coughs> Crossed them up. I know no. it. Did him that that little shake like that. I said, God. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about, you know, his times when he danced too, you know. Yeah. And you know, you know, the, he had very, you know, vivid stories about those times. So, you know, again, you know, don't think about those sad things. You know, mm-hmm. think about him and those good things, you know, and help him live longer into the future, you mm-hmm. know, and and, uh, you know, I just want to kind of give you those encouraging words because I know, you know, you're going to have your good days and you're going to have your bad days, you know. But I want you to know I'm always praying for you, you know, and I know what you're going through. And, you know, uh, like I said, I've lost my folks and you've even seen me, you know, uh, break down, you know, kind of thinking about those kind of times because I, too, was kind of. You know, I'm seeing all my people, you know, go and, you yeah. know, and I'm, I'm, there's only a few of us left, but, you know, you, you can't help but think about those things, things that maybe you haven't said, maybe it's some of the things you haven't done, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, again, death isn't to be scared of, but to learn that, you know, maybe there's some things that you need to do, you know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, so kind of think about those kind of things instead of, uh, you know, uh, maybe being so lonesome for him, because no matter what, he will always be there in your heart, you Mm -hmm. know, and in your mind. And at any time you can visit with him, you Mm -hmm. know, like that, you know, but again, you know, uh, you know, just take your time, you know, a lot of tribes, you know, they always say a year for mourning. Even uh, the, how you say, the white psychologist says it takes a long time, mm-hmm. that mourning process. And uh, anyway, so, you know, don't beat yourself up or don't, you know, and I'm glad you're getting able to where you can talk about this, you know, and and that's part of healing. It's mm-hmm. part of moving on, part of going forward. And that's what he would want for you to move on, yeah. you know, to, to carry on, to be that man, that that men of men that the ponies talk about, you mm-hmm. know. And that's what he always thought about you, too. And, you know, he's always proud of you. And so, you know, even though he may not physically be here, he's here. So just remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. You know, I'm starting to, because that, you know, like I hit Chris up and I said, man, let's, we should do, you know, we should start doing it again. And, you know, um, I need to start, you know, media and all that stuff up because I, I understand too. It's like, he wouldn't want me to not do anything, you know, because I know how he was too. He'd always get on to me about, you know, like just trying to be lazy or something, 
you know, and, and I, and I was thinking like, man, you wouldn't want me to just continue, you know, to just not do anything, you know, like, cause I know he's, he's with all his folks now and, and, uh, just everybody has gone on and cause he'd tell me, you know, like I'm the last one, you know, and I never truly knew how he felt, you know, now I do, but on his scale, it's like way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And so now I truly understand what that feeling is. But he would always say, like, I'm okay, though, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was his way of, like, preparing me, you know, for that Mm -hmm. type of feeling, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, it's just like, it's just something we all experience. We have to experience it. It's Mm -hmm. just, like, you can't avoid it, you know. And uh, it's just, it's just it was just a, such a strange feeling that it happened. Like you just can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I find myself talking to him all the time, you know, cause we doing this podcast, like this helped me understand more of like that other side, you know, we always talk about. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've been like talking and just like, you know, help me out today, you know, like whatever it may be, you know, like, I've done some photo, some photo, some photography stuff too, and I had to edit some stuff. And I was just like, just, just help me out with this. Like, just give me that juice to go, or whatever it is, you know. Like, just you know, help me get through it, or help me have a good day, or something, you know. And and so, like I was trying to say in like my solo episode, I I just can't like people say like it gets easier, but then it's like. They don't want to say that, you know, because yeah. there's no real words into saying like, I guess it does get easier, but like that just doesn't sound right when you lose a loved one. Like, mm. you know, like you said, like they're always going to be in your heart and everything in your mind. And, you know, it's just to speak positive about it, you know, but it was just like at that moment, that was in February where we've cleaned this house out. Yeah. And that all that hit me at the end. And then it was just like the memories and all that. And so, but, you know, moving forward from that, you know, I started to think about uh, just all of the good memories. Cause you know, it was pointed out to me, like, you know, you're probably traumatized seeing him like that in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And, and I was just like, dang, I probably, I was, you know, like Mm -hmm. I just, I just didn't address it like that. It was just me trying to be there and you know be with him and stuff but yeah i mean that was you know i think about to think about it it was like yeah it was traumatizing to see him like that but you know everybody said the same thing it's like you know you're gonna you're gonna see him like that for a little bit but then you know your mind will start going back to these good memories like you said of dancing like we danced like one whole summer like we traveled we did the pow pow wow trail you know Mm. we didn't uh we didn't what you call it uh contest <laughs> we just mm. went and danced like the mm. intertribal songs <laughs> but yeah but i mean like thinking back on that it was like you know that was our bonding moment you yeah. know as a as a teenager growing up you know he just thought hey i'm gonna make you some i'm gonna make you an outfit you know regalia and mm-hmm. we're gonna go dance for the whole summer you know and i was just like i want to play some video games but you know i went you know we went every weekend to these powwows mm. and dance so it was like you know, thinking about that and then just, like, that true moment of, like, him just wanting to be with me, mm-hmm. right? Like, in in that type of arena, like, the powwow trail. Yeah. You know, to experience that. You know, I think about it, too. It's like, dang, that was a lot of money he spent, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and so, but it's stuff like that. And then, like, just, you know, and we come to Tulsa all the time. So, you know, when we, when I've been out and about, you know, I remember like the times like he took me here or we went here, we watched every movie and all this stuff. And so, you know, it's just yeah. like all those like, you know, good memories of like are flooding back now. You know, mm. it's just things that are being remembered a lot. Mm. And so, you know, like. And it's just I don't know, like it's been three months no, coming up on three months that he's been gone. And so but like you said, man, I just have to like not think about like oh like i'm not gonna get his call on my birthday 
right? Yeah. You know, but I know he's going to be there. Like, mm-hmm. I know there's got to be uh, some type of, like, signal he's going to give me to know. You know, like, because yeah. I've heard stories of that, too. Like, people um, just, they'd, they'd say, like, oh, my mom would always call me on this time, you know. And then she passed away. And it was the strangest thing, like, there was, like, a knock or something right at that same time. Mm. you know on their birthday and so it's just stuff like that it's like you know hearing all these stories and um everybody just trying to handle it the very best way they could you know and so it's just like you know i truly really get and understand mourning you know Mm. as an adult because i did lose my grandma when i was a kid but i didn't really understand death that was like my first run in with like what like what happens like when someone dies, you know? Yeah. And to me, it was just like, they're just gone, you know? But when you grow up and you become an adult and you have all these things happening and then it just hits you, then it's like, you know, and then we do this podcast and it's like, you know, understand, like I understand way more, you know, than what, you know, than what probably what the average people, you mm-hmm. know, thinks about, knows about, ask questions about you know it's just stuff Mm -hmm. like that so i mean it's just like i don't know it's just all this jammed in and then that happened and it was just like you know now it's like okay well you know i i've wanted to address it on the podcast but you know i just didn't feel like i was ready to go you know but yeah you know i'm getting there i'm getting there and i'm slowly starting to come out of my shell i guess i should say you know my yeah. my turtle show, you know, I'm slowly coming out, you know, so I'm going a lot more places now. Like I said, I just went to Digipop X and, you know, hung out with everybody and everybody's cool, man. Like, you know, everybody's, you know, how are you doing? You know, you're doing okay. You know, and I really don't know what to say because I just don't want to say like, I'm getting better. Like, I just don't yeah. have, I don't know the proper words to say to people that ask me that, you know, but I, I just say like, you know, I appreciate all the prayers Mm -hmm. and then the encouraging words and, you know, everybody's just been really cool, like with that. And so for you to tell, you know, say all that on here, you know, it it means a lot, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I remember the time when you had your moment and I really didn't know what to say. I was Mm -hmm. just, cause I don't, I I didn't, I had no idea what that felt like, you know, you know, now I do, you know, like now I truly really get like what that feels like and so like you said you have your days and your yep. good day your good days and your bad days but That's you know right. but the main thing is to just try to get that positive out of it i guess you know like i don't know i'm still i'm still learning yeah i'm, I'm still i'm still growing up i'm a 35 year old kid <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm a, I'm a 21 year old kid, and I still, you know, I still mourn, you know. And, you know, one thing I want to say, you know, too, you know, I know the holidays and birthdays is gonna hit you hard, mm-hmm. you know, this first couple of years, you mm-hmm. know, and even like for me, you know, m- my uh, folks, you know, they've been gone for a while, mm-hmm. and every holiday, every. Uh, birthday you know i know their birthdays come around and even my own even though i like to try to forget mine (laughs) but uh (laughs) you know i I think about those things but you know i've I've been able to adapt you know and and what i mean by that is you know i'm not thinking of it solely i mean yeah it's sad for me Mm -hmm. but you know again you know I, i i cherish those thoughts of all those past birthdays I had, you know, and, and, you know, some of them were good and some of them were bad. You know, I didn't grow up with people with a lot of money, you know, so, you know, sometimes, you know, we just got to, you know, be there and share a meal. And I, I remember those and mm-hmm. those were some of the best things because I got to visit, you know, I got to hear stories and, and things like that, you know, and, and to me, you know, I start thinking about that and I, it starts to cheer me up. Yeah, it starts off sad, but then yeah. I think and then I share that information with my children and my grandchildren. And, uh, you know, it makes me feel good that, you know, I had those experiences and, and you'll get to that point, too. You know, yeah, you know, 
it might make you, you know, sad, but you know, take that moment. Yeah. Because it's important that you remember them. Mm-hmm. Remember them in that good way. So don't never run from that. Never, you know, shy away from that. You know, that's helping them live, you know, way past their time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, again, that's what I'm hoping you understand what I mean by that. You know, don't if you got to cry, cry, yeah. you know, do it, you know, and and, you know, because you've got to learn to release it, yeah. you know, learn to cope with it and if you don't that's when you start having issues Mm -hmm. and so again you know like i said you know i know like holidays and especially birthdays it hits me sometimes and that time it was you know around holidays and Mm -hmm. stuff and you know it it, i i started thinking about my folks you know and and they're no longer here, you know, and there, there's nothing that I wouldn't give to have one more moment with them, five minutes or a minute, you know, but, you know, again, you know, it is what it is. And and if I truly want to, I know I can express and I know they'll hear me, mm-hmm. you know, and uh just know that too, you know, if if you feel like, you know, you want to tell them something, you know, you, you're always, always can and, you know, always able to. Don't ever say just because their physical body is not here mm-hmm. that they can't hear you, you know, and that's what those old timers used to say, you know, be careful not to call them back so often. Don't mourn so much where you make them stay here, you know, and it wasn't solely for yourself, but for them to move on and do the things they need to do and and enjoy, you know, their loved ones that have gone on, you know, they're getting to visit now. And Mm -hmm, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of people that they got to visit with, you know, and, uh, Again, you know, like I said, it's all right. You know, just remember that. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. And then I was telling Chris about, you know, the the dreams I had with him and them and stuff. And so, and then, I mean, I was thinking about that dream episode we had, you know, and just how powerful your dreams are. And, yep. you know, powerful for them to even be there, you know, and mm-hmm. talk and stuff. And, yeah, and so... Yeah, I appreciate that. The dreams that he's come to me in. And the last one I had, though, like, it was, um, I don't know where we were, but we were in some building, and and he was at this table reading his paper, you know, and, and I walked up to him. and But that at that time, it was like, you know, like I say, like, I'm getting better, and I liked your word adapting, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, like adapting to a lot everything that you know is happening and trying to do all these things and move forward and live you know because but i remember walking up to him and he's reading his paper and i just kind of sat down and and then we talked but i wish i knew what we talked about because it was like everything was muffled after that Mm. i don't know what was said but i know like we were sitting at this table together and then we had a conversation and then like i woke up Mm. and i was just like whoa that was crazy you know and so it was just like you know i think back up that and then the couple other ones and the one before that was like on a phone call Mm. and i could hear him but it was so you know like when your phone cuts in and out Mm -hmm. and it was it was real staticky and i knew it was him because when he called it said dad on on the phone and so you know i was trying to tell him you know like just i miss you or whatever and he would say something and then it would just be like this static noise mm. and nothing would come out. And then, then he would talk a little bit more and then it'd be the same thing. And then the the call was dropped and I was doing whatever I could to call it back. And I woke up and that one, like, that was like probably like, I think after we cleaned out his house though, like maybe a couple mm-hmm. weeks after that. So you know, like, and then the one thing he said in that dream was like, because I was just like, I miss you. You mm-hmm. know, I, I just was flat out saying all this stuff. And 
and it was weird. It was crazy because he he said like it was real staticky and it was like like a old walkie talkie, I guess. And mm. he was like, "I know I haven't been around as much," and I was like, "Oh man!" And then, but we had this like I was trying to con- have a conversation with him, but it was the whole every time we talk, it was like that. Mm-hmm. And that's when I woke up, and so, but you know, like it was just like you know reassuring, you know that. He's always there, you know, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, just, you know, like just because I know he has stuff to do, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, trying not to just keep calling him back and stuff like that, you know. So, yeah. you know, I, I have to remember that as well, because I, I forget I forget about that. It's like, you know, like there's a lot of people for him to see. Everybody's there and just whatever, whatever you may have to do. You know, and so, yeah, and it's just like I was telling somebody earlier, like it's just like for me being like selfishness, I guess, but yeah, but but they were like, no, it's love, and I was yeah. like, yeah, it is love. I said, but I know physically he's not here, but really, you know, there's no more pain, there's nothing like that, yeah, and he's with everybody that he's talked about with me from these past like years that yeah. has gone on. You know, yeah. and, and joking around, tearing people up, whatever. Yeah. Teasing them, you know, making them cry, probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Like, at his services, everybody, that's how everybody, everybody talked about him working out all the time and just teasing everybody. <laughs> 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 that's what I was going to tell you. So if he talks about that pal out there, he's probably talking about how he beat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So he's the one that stopped as low as everybody like that. Or, uh. Oh, but yeah, I mean, I just wanted to address that to everybody before we got into everything because I know everybody's been messaging us. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> and messaging, you know, people that probably are close to me too, but, you know, everybody's respectful enough to not just say what has happened, you know? Yeah. To me, you know, not just to put my business out there and everything, but you know, I've read, I've on Facebook messages, I've just said like, you know, my dad died, and that's all I would be able to say. But dressing it now, and I really just want to do it because, like I said, we, you know, it happened so sudden, and then like social media just kind of it reaches, but it don't. And so if if you're listening. Obviously, you're a listener, but if your grandparents knew him or like your folks knew him, because he was an older man, he was he passed away 87. And so, you know, if your older folks knew him and they didn't know he passed away, you know, he I just wanted everybody to know to let them know that he's yeah, he passed away. And so I know I know some people still haven't known even though they did know him, they're like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even know, you know? And it's like, it's all right. You know, like, man, like social media can, you either see it or you don't, you know, yeah. that's what I hate about it. It's like hit or miss with social media, but I just wanted to address that and then tell everybody just why we haven't done the pod. It's me and Chris don't hate each other. Yeah. We're not beefing. <laughs> Damn, I would have liked that one better than the ones that people was hitting me up with, but I'll just say that much. So. Dang. So we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're not mad at each other. That was surprising when everybody was like, some people were just like, dang, are you guys mad at each other? I was like, well, and then again, we haven't really been anywhere with each other either. Yeah. You know, because yeah. i just been kicking at the house is not doing anything <laughs> like i said earlier but yeah no we're not not mad no, no it's you know it's all good you know but that's that was what i just wanted to air that out on here about to all of our listeners our viewers kind of left everybody in the dark <laughs> yeah because everybody's like when you come out the new episode you know but yeah, and I, I try not to say anything <laughs> to put your business out there. Yeah. I just, I, I figured when you had time, you would address everything. I just mm-hmm. wanted to give you, 
you know, ample, you know, space and, Mm -hmm. and time, you know, just whenever you were ready. And, and so, you know, despite some of you guys out there saying some of the things y'all said about me, I I just took it, you know, cause (laughs) T-Watt needed that time, you know? So anyway, uh, that, that was the, the situation, you know, I just wanted to make sure he had, time to take care of what he needed to take care of i wasn't rushing nothing yeah 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 i appreciate everybody i do work with you know even chris too you know nobody rushed me back to nothing you know it was always just like take all the time you need you know like just try to you know get back to where you where i was i guess but you know i didn't you know like i said earlier it's it's a it was a new experience and it was just something that I've just never been through as an adult. And so, you know, like, it's just, it was just strange and weird. And like I said, it was just like a bad dream that I wanted to wake up from. And so that was, but I'm adapting, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, you know, but everybody says to, it's a year process probably yeah, to get to, mourn and you know to try to just understand it i guess you yeah know, try to wrap your head head around it and realize like because yeah you're gonna think about birthdays and everything else and i was thinking about that the other day i was like dang his birthday would be this year uh christmas like all this stuff and it's like oh man but like you said you know just keep thinking of those good things yeah. those good memories and everything so you know that's what's helping me too and then the prayers and you know every all those are helping as well you know i've had other just people just message me and say hey we're still praying for you you know mm-hmm. it's like you know i appreciate those you know because those help so much you know they do they really do so i appreciate all of our listeners our viewers you know if you knew if you didn't knew didn't know i mean and then you know shout out to um Everybody that helped out with the services and the funeral and the feast we had, every, you know, thank you so much for that. Thank you to all of the individuals. Um, I just don't want to name everybody just to put their names out there, but you know who you are, you know, yeah. and just, you know. I just wanted to say something to you, too, about that. You know, you did an awesome job, mm-hmm. you know, at the services, you know, that meal, you know. I, I just want to say, you know, you guys did it right. Yeah. You know, you did a good job. You know, he, I know he's proud of you. you yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. All things was taken care of the way it should have been. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you did a good job on that. You know, if you ever question yourself whether you, you did everything or what, you know, you did it. Mm-hmm. You did, did a good job. Yeah. And I was, you know, God, man, that was stressful too because – I was just like, I don't know if everything's going to work out, but it did, you know, and yeah. everything did work out. And it was just, like I said, it ha- everything happened so fast to that meat, to the meal we had. But I was just like sad. I was like, but I was happy too that everything worked out how it was supposed to. Yeah. You know, and that's what everybody said, you know, they just said like, don't try to stress about anything because everything will work out how it's supposed to. Yeah. You know, I don't really have that control. I just have to let everything go how they should. Yep. And so, yeah, you know, thank you for that. Um, I kind of did question myself. I was like, dang, I hope that was good. <laughs> no, you guys did an awesome job on that. That was a phenomenal meal. The service was mm-hmm. was on point. You know, everything went smooth, you know. Uh, so you guys did a good job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, shout out to the thank you, Pawnee Nation, as well, for helping, you know, with everything from the meals, um, the different organizations, uh, like the War Mothers, and then the PBC. And um, my mind's blanking right now. Uh, the Travelers Club, I think. And there's one more. If I forgot you, I'm so sorry. But my mind's kind of blanking. But veterans. Veterans, yes. The veterans. And that, I think that might be all, I think. But, you know, thank you, everybody, for providing a meal and 
helping us with breakfast and all that, everything. I mean, it was just like I had so much on my plate, like to from the obituary to planning to burying him to all of these things that I had to do. And just, you know, I was I worried about food. I said, man, how am I going to feed everybody? You know, and luckily, you know, my the community, the tribe, you know, they came through and they helped with that. So I really do appreciate that. And, you know, thank you so much for helping, you know, not just me, but the family and everybody affected by that in that time, in that difficult time. And just because food is like everybody kept saying, you got to eat, you got to drink water, you got to get rest, you know, and it was just like, I can't, you know, but they're like, just do it. You're going to feel so much better. You know, it's going to help you go through the day and stuff. So. You know, not not having to worry about cooking or anything like that, that really did help out a lot. So, you know, I want to say thank you. Thank you, like, for real, like, deepest thank you I could ever give. Like, thank you so much, you know, and everybody just that helped out. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So tell me about um, the uh, Digipop. Who did you see up there? So Natalie, Natalie Standing Cloud. Um, First of all, let's let's go over the ones that wasn't there with who they were supposed to. Nah, well, no, no, I'm just kidding. Kidding. <laughs> nah, I no. did see a listener. No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> call them out. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. so unless I get that fifty bucks that hits my account, <laughs> so I'm gonna start naming some names. No, I know, I know, y'all got your tax money. God. <laughs> But it helped my account. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I saw well Sten Jotty. Um Sten Jotty, Nat- Natalie Standing Cloud, um different vendors like Jessica Dr. Jessica Harjo was there, um Steven Morales, Samurai Designs, um I saw Riker Six Killer, um Toke Signals was there. They showed up. Awesome. Yeah, they were there just to hang out. Um, Did they know they was there? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> they were looking around. <laughs> so are we really here or not? No. <laughs> Am I just imagining it? No. <clears throat> oh, but they were there. Um, John Proudstar, he played the dad of um, Willie Jack. From mm. Res Dogs. Um, Gene Brave Rock was there. Roy Boney. Mm. Um, golly. The Strawberry Shortcake Woman. Who's that? Uh, I, <laughs> I look at the camera because I'm like, I don't really know. I think she had a, I think it was a cartoon called Strawberry Shortcake. Oh, okay. I and know. it was, it's like a, she's an older woman. And so I, I kind I kind of remember, but I don't really remember. I thought you was talking about like a rap star or somebody like that. Oh gone. no, strawberry shortcake coming no. out here, busting it like that. No, I think that's the sh- the name of the show, Strawberry Shortcake. It was like a cartoon. Yeah, it was an old yeah cartoon, and I vaguely remember it, but then again, I don't. But she was there. She's cool. She was there last year too. Um, mm. Dang, who else is there? I seen you take that picture with that Bigfoot. That was pretty cool. Yeah, the, the main man right there, Bigfoot. Yeah, he was he was up there walking around. Dang, I was yeah. all Jay when I saw like, that picture. I wanted to go up there right then and there. He was like, "Where's Chris?" I, said, I don't know. <laughs> so they 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 saw him somewhere around Sky Took. No, <laughs> spotted him like that. He said, "Where's Honka?" I, said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no but that was a cool outfit that was a cool costume um but yeah i saw bigfoot and then predator from prey was there mm. uh michael wesley werewolf dj werewolf joe hopkins was there um golly my mind's blanking again but i mean it was a lot of a lot of people we know and then I know last year they did like a, I don't know what you call it, like a costume contest or mm-hmm. something like that. What do they call that? A cold play or something like that? 
what's that called? Um, cosplay. Mm. Yeah, cosplay. Did they did they have one of those too? I, I think that's today, Sunday. I think. Oh. I think. But no, we I got there around twelve and I was taking pics for them and so I was just walking around taking pics of the vendors and everything and so but there when we left around three I think because we had to get back but there were some people there were people showing up with co- more costumes and everything so they might have had it that day but what was the coolest costume you saw I know you said Bigfoot that's that's all I need to know there was Big Bigfoot was probably the coolest and there was another person walking around with like I think they were a trickster coyote Oh. They had like an actual like coyote head on, like mat, like full on mask. Cool, not a real head. <laughs> it was a mask, and then, and then it was like they had a tail that would wag on their backside. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so they were walking. I don't know who that was, and they were walking around, and everybody's taking pics with them. And then that was probably the other coolest one. And then everything else is kind of like just, I guess, what you'd buy from. Spirit Halloween. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But those had a lot of creativity. I, I really like that Bigfoot one. I wouldn't mind trying to buy one of those mm. and then wearing it at our event. <laughs> <laughs> You're scaring people, boy. <laughs> uh. But that was, I like, I really like that Bigfoot one. That was probably like, because, you know, you, do, you always see like just the, what you would wear, you mm-hmm. know, just the, it's the same size as a person, but this one was blown up to where it was a tall Bigfoot, you know, it, wow. was, it was big enough. So that, yeah, I enjoyed that one. I might have to look for it and buy it. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So anybody out there have any links to that? Let me know. Mm. Mm. Scare everybody out of event. <laughs> 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 but it was cool. I liked it. It was fun. It was it was really fun. Wish Chris was there. Damn, Chris saying that man. I was, like, <laughs> I was all Jay. No. I didn't get to go, boy. I was sitting there just mad, boy. <laughs> looking at my phone, looking just, at everybody posting up. Just like, deleted everyone. That God, posted about him. I know. I blocked everybody. <laughs> if you blocked, that's why. Blocked no. on Monday. God. <laughs> <laughs> Just went across the board just like that. Just <laughs> got everybody blocked. Boy. Just every picture you saw blocked. <laughs> blocked. <laughs> You're unblocked till Monday. Dang. <laughs> Dang. But yeah, it was it was cool. Yeah. I I can't I I just wonder how big it's gonna be next year. And uh I hope they keep going. Hope it's a I hope it just keeps going throughout the years, you know, the same moment in Telequal too. So that one's a good one. I always get that name wrong. Skazdi. Skazdi Con. Mm. I think if I got that wrong, I'm sorry. I apologize. It gets told to me all the time. But yet I I still forget it because it just comes up in conversation here and there. Mm. But yeah, it's it's the one in Telequal. It's a Cherokee one. Mm. Yeah. Well, that sounds awesome. Are you ready to go into our... uh Stories for today? Yeah. So, yeah, Chris, uh, let them know what we are going to be talking about. Okay, we're getting ready to talk about um, what you would call spirits that, um, how you say, encourage or influence Native artists. And, uh, well, it doesn't really have to be native, but artists in general. But since we are a native program, we're going to talk about native things. So, again, you know, any kind of form of uh, artwork, you know, artists, they're always looking for inspiration. And sometimes the inspiration comes from the other side. And I have a story that, uh, again, uh, I'm going to just uh, just say it's anonymous bead worker. And uh, they sent this story to us. Uh, I'm going to read it. It's a, a Cree from Alberta, Canada. I do a lot of bead work in the area. 
a family came to me and asked me to create a set for their daughter. This is going that is going into the arena. I asked them many questions like, do they have a family design, clan, or colors? They said they didn't they did not know any of that information. They left it up to me to make a good design. I knew their names both came from old Cree families. When I did my research, there was no one in either family around or not only in old photos of their families in Indian clothes. So it made it hard to produce a design. Many beaters do not do the kind of that kind of stuff, but I like mine to be designed in a good way. My beadwork has a lot of meaning for the person I make it for. I learned from my mom and grandmother. They always told me when you make something for people, you need to think of that person in a good way. Those designs have a lot of meanings. I remember my grandmother would pray and burn tobacco before she would start a project. I called my mom and she reminded me of that. When you make this, you have to put your medicine into it. So the next night began to pray over all my beating supplies and burnt tobacco. I asked the great spirit to help me create something good for this child, that this child means a lot to her family and if he could help me create something that would take care of her a long, in a long way. That night, I went to sleep and I dreamed of an old Cree lady that I did not know. She spoke to me in Cree and told me that I am going to do a good job and that she will help me. And then I woke up. I did not think much about it but all day I kept seeing moon images all over the place something kept telling me about the moon rising I called my mom and told her about it and she said there is your design that is calling to you go for it so I began the pattern I took a break went to sleep I dreamed of that old Cree woman again she was saying to me in, I guess, their language, how would you say that? Man, language-wise, I don't know how their consonants are, but English-wise, to me it says, Betustu. All right, we'll go with that. Forgive us, for, yeah. Forgive us yeah. if we didn't get it right. Means the moon is coming up. What was crazy? I heard already all the colors that I needed. It was like this was meant to be. Every night I dreamed of this old lady. This is the crazy part. I never remember buying anything for this project. It was like this old lady would bring me the things I needed because I had everything I already needed when I woke up. Some Sometimes things would get done so fast it was like someone was helping me. As time went on, I kept dreaming of this old Cree lady every night. I finally got close to finishing the complete set the moccasins, the hair ties, the whole dance set. I was finishing the belt and the outfit would be done. I finally got done in record time and I called my mom and told her. She she did a good job. So I went to take a nap. I woke up right when the moon was rising. I saw a shadow of a lady in the corner of my eye. I turned to look and it was that old Cree lady. She told me that that was her great grandmother. She wanted me to tell the family that 
I wanted to hear to. She wanted me to tell the family that I wanted to have this beadwork and the name that goes with it. The moon is coming up. No matter what the weather or how cloudy it gets, the moon will always rise and give good medicine and beauty to the ones that will take it. That is her great-granddaughter. The moon is coming up. No matter what comes her way, she will always come up. I remember that very clearly. I told the family when I gave it to them. And to this day, that person still wears that symbol of the moon coming up. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, when you brought this topic up, and then you actually gave me a, uh, I guess, like, um, like what it really could be because when we when you brought it up i just kind of thought of like oh haunted art pieces you know like the the bad stuff right yeah you know that story really opened it up to like that putting that medicine into your piece you know you know smoking off you know speaking about it you know asking for that help you know and that's what really now you know every time you know we do we do a topic it stuff like stories like that just kind of opens my mind up to even more Mm -hmm. of what we do you know with our as our people and everything so Mm -hmm. you know i like that i really do like that and how you know there was help yeah couldn't explain it yeah right like you know the dreams you know powerful dreams so yeah yeah i really did like that I know a long time ago, you know, uh, studying history, you know, those patterns are what, you know, told us about ourselves, you Mm -hmm. know, about our tribes, about our people, about our clans, you know, about our our, our whole way. You know, beadwork has a lot of meaning. And, you know, to me, I thought this was a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. I apologize if I butchered it all up because it's been a while and again, you know, I had to go and, and look back and look at my notes and things like that. So, again, uh, I apologize if, you know, I, I, I didn't tell it very good. But, again, I thought, I think that was a phenomenal story. It was, yeah. Thank you for that story. Thank you. I have another one, but I'm going to ask um, Russell to read this one. I'm going to decline. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Dang, scared me for a second, boy. Like, oh, God. No. <laughs> okay. You want me to say the title, too? Yeah, you can. Okay. okay. The Goddess of Death Statue, a.k.a. the Woman from Lim. Um, the artifact was crafted around 3500 B.C. and found in Cyprus in 1878. And of the families it's belonged to over the generations... Each one has been torn apart by death. Within six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family have perished. Once the second owner, Ivor Minucci, acquired it, death came for him and his family. After only four years, the statue then vanished for a long time while, but when a new, for a long while, but then, but when a new third family eventually laid claim to it, several members died. However, two of the remaining members very wisely donated the artifact to the Royal Scottish Museum. Damn. Dang, Chris. That's crazy. That's scary. Yep. I know there's a lot of things like that, whether you call it witched or just bad luck or, mm-hmm. you know, some created some sculptures and they're not like in their right minds you know and a lot of these artists they put a lot of their spirit into things and so to me that makes sense Mm -hmm. you know i don't know what else you got in here (laughs) (laughs) little photos yeah (laughs) 50 bucks to not let me post these chris (laughs) no (laughs) Nay. Do you want me to read this one? Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. Right. But yeah, that's uh that last one, you know, would you 
would we consider that cursed i guess too yeah i mean yeah. you could you know you could call it cursed. like i was saying sometimes these artists they mm-hmm. put you know everything into into some of these things you know and, and sometimes they're not in their right mind so sure you know you never know yeah yeah i like that story Anonymous suit maker, 1864 to 1950, um, died at age 86. The famous Native American flute maker was 86 years of age. He was known by the flutes he made as well as the music he played with his flutes. He was known for his 1941 recordings for the Library of Congress. They said many of his designs came from spirits that helped him design and make these flutes as well as spirits that gave him his music. It was said he had a vision of a flute that was made out of an unknown wood. It wasn't his normal cedar wood flutes. In this vision, this supernatural being gave him a special design, and after he made it to the specter, made it the specter gave him a song. Uh, He told him after he plays this haunting melody, his life would end. On the, on his last day, they said they could hear him play this haunting melody. They even say, even today, if you sit quietly in the area where he was, where he was from, you can hear that flute play. Some say that is him playing that last song that was never recorded. That flute that is mentioned was sold to a man overseas, and with that flute is a curse to whoever owns it. That flute has moved has moved around from owner to owner told that if you have it unbelievably bad things will happen to you damn Damn. that one's uh and that that one's actually from oklahoma yeah that that artist was from oklahoma so i I just think that's pretty cool well the part about um him playing it for the last time and then that was it Mm -hmm. and then you know if you could sit if you sit there quietly you can you can hear that haunting melody Mm -hmm. now was has there been anything of like well, I don't know if you know, but um if you hear it, does something happen to you maybe? You never know, yeah. you know. I know, you know, again, you know, these flute makers, you know, just like like what I was saying, you know, those these sculptors too, you know, you'll hear a lot of them saying, you know, they got inspiration from the spirit world to make this flute. Mm-hmm. A lot of flute makers, you'll hear them say that. They might not tell the public that, but they'll tell their own or, or uh, how you say, uh, people that they can tell things to, you know, uh, mm-hmm. clo- people that's close to them. And so, you know, to me, that's kind of like a common story that them putting kind of everything they got into it and they get inspiration from the other side and this is why i always thought this was a a, a kind of a unique topic because you know people don't you know they talk about the scary things the good things but this is part of the creativity of this you know uh, of spirit so again i I just thought this was a pretty cool topic Yeah. yeah so most definitely i like that story let's see Go ahead and read this one. Whoa, whoa. No, ah. <clears throat> I think I wrote this one down. Yeah. Thank you. Alike. Thinking alike. Oh, that spirit was talking to yeah. you like that. So. I'm scared. Go ahead and read it. Ah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this one is the anguished man. Anguished man. And I was reading about this um, prior to doing this podcast and came i did come across this one so this was very interesting that we found it but the anguish man remains a mystery as both its artist and date of creation are unknown however it is said that he used his own blood to mix with the oil paint and at the end of this work he committed suicide the supernatural history of this cursed net, cursed artwork begins in North England when the grandmother of the current owner, Sean Robinson, took possession of the painting more than 30 years ago. It is said that a friend of the family gave it to Mrs. Robinson, but immediately she understood that something was wrong with his work of art. Uh, sometime later, Mrs. Robinson gave the painting to her grandson, Sean, who to date has it in his possession among... Oh, in his... 
in his possession. Among the paranormal events that involve this work, the Robinson family says that at night, this painting emits groans, screams, and tears the fabric of the portrait. Sean himself has reportedly uploaded the videos to YouTube where he shows the alleged paranormal events related to the work. Whoa, that's yeah. pretty cool. I, I've, I watched that video, too. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, and because... I found that story and I heard that he did put it on YouTube. And so the other thing he added was in that video at the end, he said that he moved it back upstairs. And when he did, his wife felt someone stroke her hair in the bathroom. And then he also said that he saw a strange fog, like mist at the top of the stairs that vanished as suddenly as it came Mm. after he moved that upstairs from where he was filming it downstairs. But mm. yeah, that video is crazy. It's like you could hear something scratching on that painting, mm. and then the door shuts in that room, and there's groaning. Mm. So it's very eerie, and that painting is scary. Dang. Have you seen it? Mm-mm. No. You should look it up. Get no, cursed. No. No. I think I'll leave that be. <laughs> no. God. I got enough problems right now. God. But, you know. There are a lot of art pieces out there, you know, uh, just like I was telling about the sculptures and the flutes and Mm -hmm. even paintings. You know, Uh, I know I went to uh, that Zach Bagans uh, Haunted Museum and he's got like three or four paintings in there you're supposed to look at. And you can either be cursed if you don't ask permission to do something, you know. If you're going to ask to be in the room, you have to ask permission. Or if you want to take a picture of it, you have to ask permission uh, from the spirit in that painting. And so there's a lot of artwork out there like that. I mean, uh, I've went to a couple of other museums throughout the U.S. And they've got some of those up. And which is crazy because when you read the fine print on the side of the painting that kind of gives you the description... They have a name for it, but I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, when you're reading it, it'll tell you about the supposedly curse on those paintings. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I run across those things, I always think that's pretty cool because I always go to museums a lot. And, you know, you'll run across those, you know, all all through the United States. So Mm -hmm. they're out there. You know, you want to see one, maybe hit up your local museum, see what they got. Dang. Getting cursed out there. Yeah, I'll be coming out of that museum all <laughs> twisted up. <laughs> Lips going two different directions. God. <laughs> they said, which way he's pointing? No. <laughs> so is he looking? God. <laughs> it's crazy eyes. <laughs> Dang it. This, this is a, another one about, you know, a painting. This one's called The Crying Children. This painting belongs to a series of crafted paint painters in the style of Italian futurism. However, they have historically been linked to disasters and tragedies for those who possess them, and they are believed to be cursed items. They were painted by an Italian artist born in Venice in 1911 who fought in World War II. The horrors of warfare inspired this painter as he witnessed the suffering of children during the conflict. This event created a scare and stayed with him to the grave. Frustrated that the war stopped his aspirations for artistic fame, he moved to Spain, where under the... uh, I don't know what that word is. Where at? Is it Sodom? Sue? So, so. You're on your own, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. He, he learned under Giovanni Bergolin. Br- Br- he decided to capture this negative feelings on canvas. The first of a series of 27 paintings with the theme of crying children would be created in the late 1940s. It was in the 1980s that this painter would gain the much-awaited fame he desired 
as a series of unexplained uh, things linked to the, his paintings gained notoriety in Europe. The first tragedy was reported in the United Kingdom and published in the Sun newspaper on September 4th, 1985. This British newspaper reported a series of house fires at locations where paintings in the series were held. In Yorkshire, a firefighter then claimed that within the these houses, the crying children portrait was always found intact, while everything around it was burnt. Collective hysteria erupted immediately, and during the following months, several newspapers published articles about house fires whose owners possessed one of the paintings. Yeah, I, that was another one I had on here. Uh, it's crazy. I was reading about that one, too. And, yeah, all those fires happened, but that painting was the only thing that survived. Mm. Perfect condition. Dang. And it made headlines and everything, too. And the one I was reading, they had an actual, like, the actual newspaper, like a copy of it. Mm. Like, I guess they scanned it, and then they sent it out. Or they scanned it, and then it's from way back in the day. And, yeah, I mean, that. I think it says, like, you know, massive house fires happen, but the only thing, this painting lives. Mm. Yeah. Man. And so that painting... It doesn't look like the English man. The English man's pretty scary looking. Well, I thought about putting him on here, but then I was like, I better not. <laughs> man, people be mad. Yeah. So my house all burnt up. Russell be posting pictures. No. <laughs> he cursed us. I don't know. He, he knew better. He did that on purpose. Nah. <laughs> Here's another one. <clears throat> Let's see. Portrait of Bernardo de Gal Galvez. One of the most famous famous examples of haunted art is the cursed portrait of Spanish military leader Bernardo de Galvez, possibly made by Salvador Mela. The painting appears like a typical portrait, but the way it was painted produces a certain discomfort for all those who end up appreciating the work of art. This cursed artifact depicts Bernardo de Galvez, born in the city of Malaga, Spain, on July 23rd, 1746, who died in strange circumstances on November 30th, 1786. This character was famous for helping the American colonies during the War of Independence of the United States. It is located at the Galvez Hotel in Galveston, Texas, a place whose, fr whose fame is directly related to ghosts and other paranormal phenomena. A group of spirits is said to inhabit the hotel, and the most intriguing and terrifying stories take place around the portrait of Bernardo, Bernardo de Galvez. This painting is located at the end of a corridor inside the hotel where the portrait's eyes are said to follow passing guests. When people get too close to this work of art, they, feel, they often feel freezing cold or uncomfortable. There are even those who affirm that Bernardo de Galvez himself comes down from the cursed item and follows them around the hotel. The haunted reputation of this portrait naturally represents an attraction for tourists trying to take a picture of the painting. However, it seems that the guests cannot obtain a clear image unless they request permission from Don Bernardo. Mm. Dang. So you better not take no picture of that guy. <laughs> Have you ever been to the hotel? I don't think so. I was kind of thinking about that. Um, I've been all over the place down that way, though. But I might have. I might not have known about it, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I've been to a lot of places, and I don't learn about them till after I've left, you know. And mm -hmm. like, Did you see this? Or, Did you see that? I was like, no, I didn't see anything. <laughs> so, anyway. I worked at a, in Santa Fe, I worked at this hotel called La Fonda Hotel. And they had, like, old paintings i'd work at night from 11 p.m to i think 8 a.m so it's an old building as well like it's been there for a long time and then i mean we're talking about this now and i'm thinking about it it's like that all that history is there from those paintings yeah and from the building and everything and i know a few times um i would see 
I'd be wide awake too, but I'd look one way and you know how you, you just see maybe a shadow or something move fast, like so fast across like your view. Mm. That's what I would see. Like all the, all the way at the end of the hallway, I would see that. And so, I mean, thinking about that and then the history of that place and then the paintings there and they're probably no longer there, like the people who painted them and everything, like, and then we talk about how maybe, maybe they asked for that help to create those, Yeah, you know, all these things go into that. It's like, okay, well, you know, now I, I'm starting to think back of like, dang, I was walking around there with all those spirits. You know, uh. (laughs) And you probably you probably heard of this too, you know, like around those uh, Navajos, they do like those sand paintings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, you're talking about them calling those supernatural powers. They'll either do a painting to help you heal, and sometimes I've heard them do some of these paintings to curse people. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, they ask those spirits to help heal in a way, and they make those sand paintings and they give it to people that you know are needing that and so you know with that being said you know there's all kinds of things out there you know that the you know supernatural side helps deal to deal with you know and with art so yeah. again you know this this was a interesting topic i just i just think it's just phenomenal myself so mm-hmm. yeah me too same here I've got another story, and this one's from Anonymous Crow Sculpture, a bronze artist. <clears throat> when my cousin first started his sculpture career, he did a lot of unusual art projects to make fast money. He went to school to study art. He even got to go overseas to do international art program at the University College of London. They worked really hard when he was over there. He got mixed up with a bad crowd. They partied really hard, and they would practice evil witchcraft. They would summon all kinds of things to help them create their art. Growing up in Billings, Montana, he knew of our native ways and what our people said missing with those things. But he got desperate and plus all the drugs and alcohol he took he was not in his right mind he thought he would just play with it till he got big time then he would stop so he started up with those guys he did a ritual and it gave him visions he asked for it to help create something that would help him make sales This vision came to him as a little man. He was beautiful. He looked like something out of a painting. It told him to create his image and to add a piece of him to it. So he did. He made this little man with his face on it, and he also used a small piece of his skin to the bronze he used. It was not nothing special, But it sold really quick and for a lot of money. Enough money to start his career and to go back home. As soon as he got back, he bought a studio and fixed it up. Made some people some sculptures that sold for some massive amounts of money. Then he began to get sick really fast. He called me up to come over. And he told me and his mom this crazy story. He went to the doctors and was diagnosed with cancer and died five months later. He lost everything and he died broke. The family had a tough time putting him away. Even to this day, he is buried on a family plot. And when you go out there, even during the day, you go to his grave you get this very spooky vibe. Wow. Man, that's a, that's pretty scary. I mean, and then when we talk about how, when you're dealing with that stuff too, I mean, witchcraft. Yeah. You know, that's out of the ordinary of what 
we know of and everything, and it, especially in a foreign land. Yeah, you know, because you don't know what they're using. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, that's when you said that. I mean, I got. I was like, wow, that this isn't going to end well. Because <laughs> I mean, it's that's pretty. Like you're going away from home, and now you're in some new place that's not even here in America. And yeah. then these people, they do that on a regular. It sounds like, and so, and mm-hmm. you know, would that would you say that's like bargaining too? Like you're, yeah. You're, I mean, anytime you deal with those uh, evil spirits, I don't care where you're at, I don't, mm-hmm. anywhere in the world, evil's evil, mm-hmm. and you know they they bargain pretty rough. You mm-hmm. know, so I've always heard it'll give you what you want. Mm-hmm. But it's not what you really want, if you know what I mean. True. And so he might make you a millionaire, but then you die. Mm-hmm. You don't even get to, you know, enjoy it. Yeah. So they strike the deal with you, but yet you still don't get to. So it's crazy like that, you know. And, and like you were saying, you know, I've always been told no matter where you go, you know, people got things and you have to be careful. Mm-hmm. on those things you know you might go over there and think you're mr indian and find out these guys got something you know over there as well so and i've heard a lot of stories like that before so you know again that one kind of i like that one so yeah. that was a pretty cool story i thought yeah i sure appreciate you guys sending that to us mm-hmm. yeah, no. yeah thank you for that i got another story of uh Russell wants to try to read it. Nope. God. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. This one is Hindu story. According to Hindu belief, the god Shiva was traveling to Kashi, Varanasi, Varanasi, I think, one of the holiest cities in India, along with an entourage of deities. Uh, including Shiva, these deities numbered at 10 million. When the deities arrived at Unakodi, they decided to stay for the night. Before going to sleep, Shiva had instructed his entourage to wake up at sunrise so as to continue their long journey when they dawn, when dawn broke the next day. However, only Shiva was awake whilst the rest of the deities were still fast asleep. As a result, Shiva continued his journey to Kashi on his own. In addition, Shiva cursed his fellow deities and turned them into stones. Hence, Unakoti's name refers to the number of deities turned into stone by the enraged Shiva. Dang. That's a real sculpture, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like we like we always say, I mean, stories come from everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's a Hindu story, mm-hmm. you know. So um, it's just I, I just like like all the history that we come across, not just native, right? Like it's everywhere. Yeah, it's from everything, and everybody has stories from their people, mm-hmm. and no, and that's one of them. Like those Hindu people, you know, they've got. They got a lot of evil things out there and a mm-hmm. lot of deities that they believe in and uh even uh the Arabic people they've got, you know, uh I can't even think of the name of them, but anyway, uh they have different spirits, you know, that kind of do stuff like that, but mm-hmm. you know, go be, saying that, you know, we bring it back home and uh for some reason I don't have the actual story, but uh, this individual talked about booger masks. Mm -hmm. And booger masks were used for healing and spiritual ceremonies or for hunting and or for running off evil spirits. Now, when you think of booger masks, you you automatically think of a Cherokee uh, nation or because they look like that. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, uh, no, because they they make those booger masks. You know, they usually use it for clans to represent clans. And but you know, they also had you know other booger masks that were um, made for other things. And some of the norm- northern tribes they use booger masks too 
to uh, ward off evil spirits. You know, they would put one in the house and and it was to, you know, run off uh, negative spirits or uh, we, what would you call negative medicine mm-hmm. that might be sent to you. You know, and those things would would devour those things. But, you know, with those kind of things, you know, you have to know how to take care of them. Uh, a lot of tribes, they had those kind of things. And so I don't know if you would consider that art, but to me it would be fall under art because you have to bring it, you know, that face to life. You got to, you know, make a, a kind of like a, I, I guess what you would say, like a human type face. And some have hair, some have no hair and some have uh, other things that are attached to it. Maybe like, for example, uh, when I say skin, I don't mean human skin. I mean like animal skin of some sort. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, you know, those booger mask stories are are pretty uh, spooky, but they also have a, a curse to them too. So you have to really be careful telling those booger mask stories as well. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, if you were wanting to see one of those, again, that I don't know if it's still open or what, but that Adelo Lodge Museum in Muskogee had a set of them. And, of course, they're Cherokee booger masks. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I also know Choctaws had one at their new museum, I don't know if it's still up or in their exhibit or what, but I heard, you know, some people didn't care for it to be up and it was kind of controversy over that. And so again, you know, I don't, I don't know. And, you know, you got some of these other tribes that kind of deal with those kind of things and, you know, very seldom, uh, will you see, those kind of things, you know, but, you know, they all know what they are and how to use them. So, uh, to me, first time I met, uh, I don't know if you know or remember that Austin rail rider. Oh yeah. Yeah. He used to make those masks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, first time I came and saw his uh, booth, I just stopped and I was like in shock, you know, cause he makes those, uh, Pawnee, uh, masks mm-hmm. and i stopped and i said oh my gosh you know it scared me and uh, i asked him about it you know he, he said well you know he said i definitely i i know what you're talking about he goes yeah he said that they, they they were used for that he said but this i'm i'm just making them to sell you mm-hmm. know they're not they're nothing spiritual or anything like that but he said i do i've heard stories and yeah, he was talking about how he had a friend up north um, that had one in his house. And he said when he would go there and visit him, he said when you walk by that mask, he said you could just feel something there. You know, and, and they would feed it in the morning times. He didn't say what they fed it, but, you know, he said that they would, you know, f- feed it in the mornings. Mm. And so he said, he said, yeah, those are pretty scary stuff. But, you know, he was talking about his. He said, these are just for art. So Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I remember those masks he would have, but I never, I never, I, at that time, I just didn't really know a lot of history, like, especially booger masks too. Mm -hmm. I just never like knew about things like that. You know, and I, but I remember those masks and I didn't know if there was any kind of history to it. So I'm glad, you know, you asked at least. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Because now, you know, after remembering them, I was going to ask you like, well, did he say what, you know, if, is there any like meaning behind them? You know, I was going to ask you that, but no, he well, just wanted to make them. Yeah. He, he just made them to, you know, uh, I remember him saying, you know, he, he, I guess he, went to school for it, you know, Mm -hmm. for art, you know, sculptures and stuff. And Mm -hmm. that was just something that talked to him. And uh, he used to make those. And 
uh, I, if I remember correctly, though, I think he used to look at old pictures and create, you know, because they were Pawnee style masks. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of what he did. So. Yeah. Yeah. They were cool looking. Yeah, they were. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I first time I saw him, I about gave me a heart attack. Uh, no. <laughs> I said, dang, he's trying to witch everybody. No. <laughs> That's why I went up to him and talked to him. And then, you know, of course, he's joking around with me and stuff. But he knew exactly what I was talking about. He said he had heard that from, you know, other tribes. And, Mm -hmm. you know, people always asked him. And he said, no, he said, not these ones. He said, I didn't put nothing on them or they weren't created like that. He said, these were just solely for art. Yeah. So I thought, whew, that's a close call. (laughs) Good. I was thinking, I got some names of people I want to take care of. No. <laughs> Chris, come here. God. <laughs> Close that door. Dang. <laughs> but, yeah. You, well, you brought up um, with that mask, too. They would offer it. Mm-hmm. Like, so I came across this one story of this lady found, a, like, a what she claims is a haunted painting. And she came across it, bought it, hung it up. And just like that English man one, like this is not the same painting, but it's a different one. And basically she says like she hung it up and she started hearing scratching noises, not on the painting, but in that room. Mm. And then things would drop. Things would drop on the floor or knock over from the table. And she said it just started becoming more and more of a, like just happening all the time. Mm. And so what, but what really like interested me on that was at the end of that, she said, I made an offering to it. I gave mm. it water and some food and I put it in front of the painting Dang. and I said, let's make a deal. You don't do this anymore. And you know, I'll, I'll give you this. And then mm. she said, and so like what was crazy was like, she said she did that. And then after that, all that stuff stopped. But then she said when she started, like, taking pics of it or, like, doing videos with it, then after that it would start doing it again. And so mm. she would have to keep giving it food and water. Well, sometimes, <laughs> you know, those spirits will let you know. Oh, yeah. You know, they'll you know they'll communicate with you. You know, a lot of people, they'll just think things just popped in their head, you know. And uh-huh. They knew what to do, you know, but... Where did that knowledge come from? Mm-hmm. They used to say, you know, natives, we, we were very superstitious people. Yeah. And, you know, anything like that, we, we believed had the spirit to it. And sometimes you can put it in action, mm-hmm. you know. And so something might be dormant, but you know, especially if you're going to feed it, you know, you're definitely going to wake it up, mm-hmm. you know, and. And you know, I've I've heard stories. Uh, there's a Comanche artist. Uh, he did some paintings uh, of a, uh, like a prairie, and he was telling me that he had finished that painting and was looking real pretty. And you know, he he uh, finished that part. You know, he had the prairie on there, and he had the the. Uh, sky on the back you know the blue and the clouds he put but he was gonna he was thinking about putting other things on there and you know he didn't really know what he was gonna add to it to kind of finish it off and uh he said that you know uh he uh looked at it and you know he said well it's late i'm gonna go on to bed and hopefully with a fresh mind you know in the morning time i'll come back and it'll come to me what what to put on that that uh painting mm-hmm. you know finish it off and so he went to bed woke up next morning and then those in those clouds that was on that painting was automatically there was buffaloes on a couple of them and a face on the other and he said for whatever reason that thing's finished hmm. and he's you know, he said that wasn't the only time that, you know, something like that has happened. You know, he's done a painting, you know, of a, of a, a scene, you know, an Old West scene. And he said that, you know, images just appeared on it. 
you know, he, he walked away and he came back and he said he knew for a fact that he did not add those things, those images. He said, even if I was to do that, I wouldn't have been able to do it that fast. Mm -hmm. And he said, for whatever reason, they are the way they are. And of course, you know, he sold them, you know, and made some good, good money off of them. So, Mm -hmm. Uh, again, he, you know, was thankful to those spirits for helping him. Yeah. Yeah. And what's his name? No. Ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> He'll be, everybody be wanting his haunted paintings. No. <laughs> God, I might help him out. <laughs> we take 15% off. No. God. <laughs> we take 15% cut, I guess I should say. No. <laughs> we take 80, take 20. No. <laughs> But, uh. but, you know, like I was telling you earlier, you know, the other uh, groups, uh, you know, of course, I'm a, I run into a lot of drum makers, you know, people that make those big powwow drums <laughs> and sometimes they make hand drums. And again, you know, a lot of those uh, guys that make that, they'll tell you sometimes, you know, again, they call that big drum grandpa you know and anyway to make a long story short sometimes you will see images that just come on those drums and with those ones you know they always uh, say that you know again this one's you know got certain kind of spirit to it Mm -hmm. and even with those hand drums you know maybe somebody might ask you just kind of like that bead worker you know, that first story we told, you know, somebody might ask for a hand drum and, you know, they're making it up. And once they get it done, it'll have its own images on there. And anyway, uh, there was an older um, drum maker. Anyway, he was known for his drums. But, you know, a lot of his drums would have images on them. And, you, and that's how a lot of those singers would know that was a drum that was made from him because it had images that was already into the skin. Mm. And that was before they would, you know, like nowadays they dye them and they do all kinds of crazy stuff, even paint on them, you know, on these drums. And I guess uh, he originated those emblems on those drums, I guess. I don't know. But, hmm. you know, he said... Uh, yeah, he knew when he was making it for somebody that it would come out like that. It would have its own images on it. And uh, I've heard other drum makers say the same thing. You know, I, I remember one drum maker said, you know, he's young. And at first when he started making them, you know, he was in his early teens. And uh, he learned from his grandpa, but his grandpa told him, said, you know, sometimes these drums will have its own spirit. And he said, when that happens, you know, you know, take care of it, you know, uh, especially if it's going to a certain person, let them know, you know, this is what, you know, was gifted to them in that drum. And, you know, those old drum makers used to say that they also used to put medicine inside those drums. You know, those older drums, they would have old ancient medicine in them. And uh, even uh, certain hand drums, uh, they used to have these certain emblems that would, you know, just kind of when that skin would dry, it would be. It would be there and so i always like that those kind of stories especially hearing from these uh people that make these uh drums mm-hmm. yeah i was just sitting here thinking like dang there's probably so much more i mean even deeper you know yeah. because when you first brought this up i was like oh just i was thinking of haunted paintings like <laughs> that was Man. all i was thinking of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Chris is like, I got stories about beadwork and drums, and I was like, Oh man, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> did Did you get any stories? I didn't get any. Um, 
but I know like when we were asking people to, it was just around the time of all that happening. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And then, um, but I got, had random stories about other stuff, but I'll probably read those in our next episode. But yeah, I, I never, I didn't get any stories. I think, I think somebody messaged me about, are y'all looking for like haunted painting? And I was like, yeah, just message Chris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I got one and I can't remember who it was. Uh-huh. And this guy, he's, he's from uh, Creek country and he was talking about a painting um, that would, he had a dream, a uh, dream of a uh, light coming from the sky. And uh, anyway, uh, he kept having that same dream. It just happened like every night, every night for for a long time, you know. And and so anyway, he thought, well, uh, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to draw this. And he drew it and once he was done he said it was a picture of him standing in the field and in in this field was kind of like a spaceship and uh, he thought wow that was crazy Mm -hmm. yeah he said man i don't know he he didn't watch any sci-fi movies or anything like that he's Kind of one of these old guys like to watch westerns and, you know, stuff like that. But he was never into sci-fi. So, anyway, he said, well, I didn't think anything of it. So, anyway, he was going to uh, town. He lived in Dustin. He went down to Wetumpka, I guess, to go grocery store or something. And on his way back in the middle of the night, his uh, truck died out. So, you know. He was trying to hurry up and get his groceries back to his house. And he said he wasn't too far from where he was at. And he said, man, these groceries are going to go bad if I don't hurry up and get them to the fridge. So he said, well, I'll walk this to the house and then I'll come back. I'll get somebody to give me a ride and we'll work on this truck and bring it back. So he was cutting across through the field. And he said he saw this bright light. It just happened. For just a little bit, then it just, like, someone turned the switch off, and it was gone. Whoa. So. So he painted that. Yeah, he painted it before that happened. Yeah, before that happened. And uh, it just flipped him out. In a dream he saw that? Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that that goes back to deja vu, I guess? Might be. I mean, that or they were trying to tell him something. Well, I was going to bring up to you, too, like... I mean, that, I was going to ask you, like, you know how people would, I mean, we talked about it on this one, but I mean, it's like they would see something in their dream, but they're able to draw it, create it in some creative form of painting, drawing, whatever it may be. And then later on, it does happen. And I was going to ask you if you ever heard, heard anything like that before. And it that I just got reminded of that from that story. Mm. Yeah. Like deja vu. Yeah. And then you draw it, and then you kind of probably forget about it, and then it actually does happen. How mm. you drew it in your dream, you know. I wish I, I could do that. I could. I wish I could draw out like the things I see. I hear a lot of that. I've heard. I've heard a lot of stories like that. Uh, the majority of them. Well, I should say it's half. Mm-hmm. People will write down their dreams, mm-hmm. and then it'll acquire. Mm-hmm. And same way, you know, they might draw it, and then later on it happens. And, you know, of course, their family and friends all tell them it's just a coincidence. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, I don't know, you know, if that's happened more than once, mm-hmm. who knows? And what do you say? Just that light happened and it just mm-hmm. went, it just disappeared? Yeah, it's it like was, someone turned it off. It was gone. What do you feel like when it happened? He said that. You know, he was he was just kind of startled when uh-huh. it happened. He didn't think about it, that drawing. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just, because he saw this great big old bright light, you know, above him. He couldn't figure out, you know, where it was coming from or what it was. You know, uh, he thought maybe a, a helicopter or, you know, something, but he couldn't figure it out. And it just vanished. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Did he run away? Or uh, did he just kind of like collect his thoughts and was like, what? I, I think he said he, he, he got to his house pretty quick yeah. after that. And he didn't go back yeah. until the next day. Dang. So. Wow. That's pretty cool to see it, draw it. Or paint it? He painted it? Yeah, he painted, painted it. Painted it and then see it happen. Yeah, he said yeah. he had that same dream for a long time. Mm. You know, so it just kept happening oh, to wow. him every night, you know. And, uh-huh. uh, even in his dream, he was still startled. Mm-hmm. And that's how he felt that day. You know, he was just freaked out about it. Has it, Do they continue after that happened? Or is it just he, no? He, he, he didn't say. He just said... Uh-huh. He just said he does. He just don't go out there that much anymore, like yeah. that. So, or I mean, in his dream, does that not happen anymore? I guess. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Since so. It happened. I don't think so. That's that's crazy. But that's, uh, that's crazy how that happens. I wonder what happens next. Dang! <laughs> <laughs> don't tell us. <laughs> yeah, we're back. So we're gonna keep it going. Get the schedule going again every every other every other week. Have a release, yep, and then go live on TikTok as well. So make sure you're following us on TikTok. Uh, Chris, let them know where to follow you. You can follow me at Christopher Honka Hill on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and you can find me under a bridge sometimes. No, <laughs> uh, you can follow me, Russell Sunny, go on Facebook. Uh, Instagram at Oki Podcast at Russellmus forty nine. Um, uh, follow us on TikTok Spirit Talkers. I think it's Spirit underscore Talkers, and send the stories. Follow us on Instagram as well. It's the same name. Follow us on Facebook. Um, if you have any stories about what we talked about today, I mean paintings, beadwork, drum making, regalia, you know all these things that you put your 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 own spirit into and you may ask for help like let us know mm. we would be happy to read them on the show and everything and um yeah we're always looking for more stories and even if you got stories of different paranormal things that have happened or cryptid encounters send a, send it our way and we can read them on the show and or if you got the stories of that uncle that won't leave <laughs> <laughs> When you're like, I'm getting tired. Dang. He's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> what you got to eat? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have picked him up. <laughs> or worse, that auntie that can't say goodbye on that phone. No. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go to the store. What are you getting? God. One more thing I gotta tell you. No, <laughs> now go in a whole new tangent <laughs> for thirty more minutes. God, <laughs> we'll take those stories too. <laughs> no, no, but um, <clears throat> yeah, send us all those stories and uh, yeah, follow us. Keep up with us. Um, might have some stuff coming up individually together. I don't know. Apparently, me and Brit, me and Chris are beefing, so yeah, this might be our last episode. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, continue to follow us, keep up with us, hit up all the native cons out there to bring spirit talkers on. We'd be happy to do a panel or do a live episode. In front of people in the audience, so mm-hmm. that'd be really cool. But f- but hit those messengers up. You got it. You gotta. You gotta want it. You know. You gotta want it for us too. So, mm. but once again, I just want to thank everybody for the continued support of Spirit Talkers, and you know, for both of us together and individually, you know, and then all the prayers that you know you speak, you've told each of us that you've you know you're praying for us as well, you know, because daily life we have our own daily lives and everything and they're very much appreciated so um i just wanted to say that once again just thank you everybody for just supporting and being there and uh being concerned about where we are yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. So, Chris, you got anything else to say? Nope. Nope. Mudo. All right, y'all. We'll see you next time. So, smudge up. <laughs>